finally time to start the Top Force 2 MS edition. Hey guys, welcome back to Tammy Legends and once again thank you for stopping by. So this is an, uh, well for me personally, an eagerly awaited project. I've been collecting bits for this for a long time. So it's a standard Top Force kit but inside this box We've got an absolute ton of um, hop-ups, mostly Tamiya, some aftermarket. Um, jokingly, I'm calling this the Top Force 2 MS edition, but when you see when this thing's built, you'll understand why. It's kind of my take, and I wasn't the first to do this, I've got to say. Um, I'm actually copying what um, my buddy Robert did. A um, few little changes from his, but um, anyway, I digress. But yeah, it's kind of, if Tamiya looked at the Top Force again and put an MS spin on it, you know, with some better spar better parts, more alloy and things like that. So that's kind of the theme of it. And we've got an absolute um, minter of a shell. Well, we've got two shells and wings. We've got a brand new Top Force shell and wing to go on this. A new design, slight tweak to the original. Um, by the time you're watching this, we've actually launched a shell on a previous video. Um, but in this particular video, um, I'm making this video first if that makes sense. So we'll actually be getting to it. But I guess the shell side of it might be on the second video because there's a lot of work to put this thing together. Right, that's enough. Oh, one thing I will add. Um, as I go and I start putting the hop-ups on, I'll show you the numbers. Um, because I know a lot of you guys sometimes copy what I do. So I'll show you the part numbers and things as we go. Um, anyway, let's get cracking. Right, that's the first stage done, which is obviously building the two ball diffs up. Very messy indeed. <laughs> There's um, the large balls on the main um, plates, and then as you build it up with the different thrust, wa thrust washers and um, disc springs, um, there's another really small one that you have to put six um, balls on um, and you've got to make sure it's 100% bang on. So I've taken my time with them. I've built a fair few of these now, so I've got a much better understanding. Anyway, that's the both diffs built. Right, next stage. So this is the rear gearbox housing. Um, so two bearings and the uh, rear ball diffs gone on. And this is the first part of the well the very first hop up part to fit now these are made by custom RC, RC parts by uh, a lot of you guys will know Borra um, absolute gentleman um, I've got a load of his parts going on this car this is just the first um, so yeah if you like what you see check out custom RC parts um, now this is extended for extra strength so if you know the standard one it doesn't have this lip it just has the four screws as normal whereas this you can see where the rear shock tower goes. Now, this is the first time I'm using these parts, so I'm guessing I will have to slacken this off when I fit the tower, but I've no idea. We'll see. But that's that's all nipped up now. So moving on, looking at the instructions now, it would be to fit the motor. Uh, but I'm, I'm not fitting... In fact, yeah, we are fitting a motor. Sorry, don't listen to me. Right, so motor of choice is the... Brand, I've got a brand new Yokomo um, Zero T5. So it's a, it's a modern day brush mortar, but it's a 10 turn. It's going to have ridiculous RPM. Um, fully modified bearings, adjustable timing. It's a thing of beauty. Now, I'm not going to put opinion on because I'm only putting this motor in just for more sure at the moment. Um, it will come out because obviously we've got solder the motor wires on and whatever. But um, yeah, I just want to sort of put it together properly. So the um, alloy motor mount I'm using is from Jazz Rider, should you be interested. Um, and it's set up for the standard kit pinion, which is a 21 tooth. Now, second part from Bora, which is custom RC parts, is this bit. Now, normally when you fit your motor, your two screws go through there Bora's designed this part to strengthen that and that sits across there excellent so what I'll do now is we'll put the motor in and we'll put this part on right that's all together <laughs> it looks great already doesn't it that motor's gonna look superb um, and then we've as you can see that's how that goes together so although it's bling this is this is proper functional bling it's not just for sure these parts I'm putting on right now and the others are borers all add to um, the car, not just in looks. 
but um, yeah that's awesome so far so next stage now is to make the spur gear assembly up and um, let's get cracking with that right next bit to show you before I put it all together normally the well, the kit comes with uh, I think it's a 74 tooth spur <clears throat> and you fit this um, soft alloy gear into it like that and if you've run the foot top force or even manta rays you'll know that this turns to mush um, so we're not using that in the kit today and that's because um, I got hold of the um, speed gear tune set so that's Skyline speed tune gear set it's for the TA01 I think it is which fits the DF01 um, and obviously the spur comes with that gear on already so there's two bearings in there and the little plastic ends um, two bearings in this section and then we're just putting another bit of bling on so this is your bevel gear and this is the um, prop shaft cup now that is from Jazz Rider again um, that came as a set so you get the full prop shaft and two cups um, I'm a little bit concerned because I read somewhere that someone said it was either too long or too short so I'm a bit concerned um, but anyway now we'll we'll get all that together right and just before I put the lid on just showing you how it looks so it's all greased up apart from the spur gear and uh, the prop shaft cup with I forgot that bearing so I had to take that circlet back off but um, that's all built correctly now so let's get the top on right oh my god this thing's beautiful so um, normally obviously the um, gearbox cover just goes on with three screws but Bora again I'll get his sticker there so you can see it which is um, custom RC parts he makes both side braces for this and the machining is absolutely beautiful um, so that bolts down that side and then on the other side that goes out and on the inside that's all machined out to um, match a plastic absolutely stunning now I have cheated slightly um, the idea of this is you're supposed to drill through all three part, um, mounts and put a, a nut and bolt to secure it for extra strength that's what these parts are actually designed for but at the moment I've just screwed them in with a couple of extra longer screws um, I will, I'm going to actually, to be honest, I will have to order the parts, the screws, because I don't have ones. But look at this thing. I honestly don't think I've ever built anything as beautiful as this. This is absolutely stunning. Right, next stage, let me just look at the manual, is to get the rear shock tower out and make a couple of turnbuckles so again we're going full carbon not the kit and we've got special turnbuckles <laughs> oh my god I'm loving this right next stage so obviously that's the um, carbon tower now um, these have got the Tamiya um, ball ends and nuts um, and they work a tree so part number for the aluminium nuts is that and the 5mm aluminium ball connectors are that. Now as you can see we got some lovely Tamiya blue alloy turnbuckles um, and that's easy. Now before you run out and smash by it now on those if you can find them just bear with me until the end of this video because they're screwed right up. Now they are the exact size but if they have to go in anymore when I've got the car um, to get the stance right we're going to have an issue and I'm have to take a little bit off of them but I'm thinking camber wise it would probably want to go out actually when I lower it but anyway um, yeah we'll just wait to the end for, for that so yeah now it's a case of fitting the alloy and carbon shock tower to this putting two bolts through there extra strengtheners uh, and just putting the turnbuckles on right so that's all on now I've had to do my first bodge unfortunately and I guess it's my fault so when you order these parts off a of borrow um, he asks you what thickness shock tower you're using and I didn't know at the time I just said I'm using Nick Walker's and he went oh yeah I know which, which it'll be um, but I think I've ordered the wrong um, width because I know Nick does his carbon in a couple, a couple of thicknesses um, and the rear shock tower is a thin one so there's a gap from the alloy 
it's not much of a gap so what I've had to do I've just done a little bodge and I've just put something on the inside to pack it uh, and not over tightened but it's absolutely solid but um, once it's all built I will have to order the proper thickness uh, rear shock tower off a of nick but um, yeah that's looking mighty fine isn't it right so that's the rear arms made up um, uprights on again using the Tamiya um, ball ends um, bearing on the out drives which has just fallen off so next stage now is to link all this up and stick it on the gearbox right that's the back end done what a thing a beauty that is that's um, that's pretty insane to be honest that is incredible it's, it's weird, I kind of feel like I'm building something really, really special. I am, I, I, I know I am, but um, everything's free. You can actually feel the drive now. It's probably easier doing it that way. You can feel everything. Um, I did, I, I was looking at the kind of stance it's going to have with these turnbuckles, and they are absolutely going to be cock on. Um, I've slackened them way off um, just by eye uh, obviously can't really do it until I get the wheels on properly but um, what a thing that is I don't think I've ever built anything with so many sort of hop up parts on it on such a small area that's insane stunning right next up is the front gearbox Right, so this is the front gearbox, so all I've done is put the out cups in with the bearing and the diffs gone in. Now, I did, at the time of buying all these bits, I bought the um, alloy cover. Now, I know these are not very good. These are um, proper aftermarket, and they don't have a really good fit. But uh, I've put it on, but you can you probably can't see, but there's a, there is a really slight gap there. They're, um, they're not very good if I'm honest um, and it didn't match the colour either that the the kind of pale blue that I'm after but obviously this is on the bottom so I'm going to go with it for now but we may well change that back to plastic at some point now this is um, Bora's Bora, um, his last strengthening brace that goes on the front um, and the idea of this is that those three holes at the front and the two screws near them um, get drilled all the way through and it gets bolted down then at the top with the screws coming up so that sits so we can do this one-handed never the easiest thing when you're talking around the camera so that sits like that uh, as I say with five bolts coming up from me underneath once I've drilled them out um, but I'm not going to do that just yet uh, I'm just going to carry on following the instructions um, because to do that, I might need to go back to the plastic one of those yet. So let's just carry on. Right, so that's the fr um, front gearbox finished. The cover's on now. Other prop shafts in. Um, as I say, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about this. Um, it just doesn't feel like the time's right. Um, because I need to know how long the bolts need to be. And make sure I've got them. Um, obviously we don't want big bolts coming through um, anyway so I'm going to leave that for now so looking at instructions it's time to do the front shock tower right so that's the free, uh, free front gearbox done um, braces on carbon shock tower Evo style um, only issue I had um, these front turnbuckles are smaller um, it's those ones that do the front and again, so far they look spot on. Um, now the only problem I had, I didn't realise when I ordered the um, Tamiya ball ends, this is the opposite. The ball end takes a screw from this side um, and those ball ends are not long enough to feed all the way through to get a nut on. So I've had to use the kit ones there, which is a bit of a shame. I wanted them all blue, but... Um, it's not really something you're going to see. Right, let's bat on. Right, that's the front arms built up. Dead straightforward. Um, the only sort of hop up on there are the two um, ball joints on either side. Ball ends. Um, and that's about it. So now next step is bolt the arms to the chassis. And that's the front end. 
finished not as blingy as a rear <laughs> but it's not bad um, I think you've seen everything so turnbuckles are on um, the u-shaped brackets in there now but that is just sat on um, I don't want to attempt to put this on properly until I know exactly what it looks like once it's on the car if that makes sense so it's just sat on there for now um, because the bolts will go through the bumper so I want to make sure I've got the right bolts before I stick a drill through it anyway next would be the shocks but we're not using kit shots we're using the aeration big bars <laughs> oh yeah anyway I'll leave them to last so now we move on to the chassis and now the chassis is starting to come together what a thing of beauty this is now we're in uh, Nick Walker's realm he's a Mr Carbon um, and again I keep saying it but why I like what he does especially these standoffs are carbon sleeves so normally you would in the kit you get these alloy ones and don't get me wrong they look they look, they look great there's nothing wrong with them whatsoever but when you're going full carbon um, as I say Nick produces these and that's all the screws and fittings you need and when the top deck's on it's just it I don't know those four and we've got the others here that's for the steering so that's actually next now this is going to be bodge time so this is the uh, Jazz Rider steering set for the DF01 but this is for the bathtub chassis only which is the Manta Ray now there are a couple of or at least one company producing alloy steering arms for the top force now but they don't do them in blue and I personally think um the blue steering arms will really set this on fire now i have used this before on a top force evo um lookalike that i did a while ago and what you do is that solid arm there you take that off and you put a turnbuckle on instead um it's a bit of faffing around but we'll as i say that's the next stage anyway so um i'll figure out how this is going to go together now right so that's the basics on um the steering arms come with a pair of bearings for either side um, the, the um, ball ends are the same thread so that's good so I've got those on and <clears throat> excuse me and I've made the turnbuckles up um, just not to confuse you I had three packs of turnbuckles two this size um, one pair were used on the rear um, the same size go on the steering and it's the small ones that go on the front right so as you can see because this is for the bathtub that's the only movement you get um, and it's because this arm here is hitting on the bottom of that plate both sides now I'm doing this from memory so I apologize but I think what I did was well I get I do away with this aluminium bar and put a turnbuckle across it which is longer which opens these two arms out which gives it more movement I think so I've dug a turnbuckle out which will give us more so I'll just do this roughly and we'll have a quick look see what happens right so unfortunately the steering is looking like it's not gonna um, it's not gonna work um, I'm, I'm gonna leave it on as it is because I want to just crack on with the car but I'm probably gonna have to go back to um, the kit plastic arms or order the metal ones in black but to me I'm not too bothered if it's black alloy yeah. <laughs> I, I wanted it blue that was the whole purpose of it but um, yeah, I tried a turnbuckle and it wasn't having it. I need to go revisit my old Top Force video as well and see what I did because I'm pretty sure I got more steering than that. Anyway, as I say, we'll crack on. So the next stage now looks like we're mounting the rear gearbox. Right, that's the rear gearbox, our back end bolted down, two screws underneath, two screws through there with this bracket on. Now's the moment of truth to see if the alloy prop shaft is going to be the right length. So um, next stage is to yeah fit the prop shaft and fit the bolt the front end down. Right, front end's on. Good news, prop shaft is fine, perfect fit, everything works. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. Front bumper's on now. Steering's absolutely pants, but as I say, we'll redress that. We're gonna have to redress this at some point. Um, as I say, that's got to be drilled and then five bolts coming up to bolt that and clamp that down. So there's a bit of work there, but uh, I'm not too bothered about that just yet. But um, what a thing. Get up. What a thing. It's, um, it's absolutely stunning. 
Um, yeah, I'm loving it. So um, next up, I guess, because we won't put a servo in, so it's probably be um, top deck and we'll put the battery straps on as well. Right, progress. So top deck's on and battery straps and um, wing mount. What a thing. What a thing this is. God damn. Got all that carbon. What we'll do as well later, we'll get some um, like TRF style decals, maybe a Tammy across there, some white writing going down sides, and then maybe a little TRF on the battery straps. That always looks absolutely spot on. But um, yeah, um, that's pretty awesome. So that's basically the car. I haven't put the servo um, mounts in because this is not going to run for a long, long time. And we've got to sort these bits out yet. Um, so what is it now? I think it's the shocks next. Right, that's a bit more work done. Um, what have I done since? So the servo mounts are now in. I've fitted the last four bearings in the outer hubs, fitted the alloy hexes all around. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. And then I added um, some decals to the chassis, which I hope you agree, absolutely bring it alive. Um, yeah, it's funny because when I was building it, I got to a stage where I was like, this doesn't look as good, chassis wise, it doesn't look as good as my last one. But um, yeah, as soon as I put those decals on, it was like a bit of a light bulb moment. It was like, ah, yeah, that was missing. So yeah, this thing's coming alive now. So now we'll build the shocks. And the shocks are built. Now I didn't do this on camera because I have built the TRF Aeration Big Bars before on a standalone video. So if you want to know how to build these, check that video out. These things are absolutely gorgeous. Tammy is probably best shock. The small bars are great as well, but these big bars, I don't know, they just look special to me. Um, there's no oil in them because, as I said, we won't be running this for a while. Um, so I just built them dry, um, which is cool. Still feel super smooth without oil. Right, so next up now we've got to figure out how to fit them to the car because it's completely different fitment. Um, and I want to try use the actual um, aeration mounts that come with it and fit it on the car. So let's see what we've got. Right, that's the rears on. Really easy. Um, they fit great. Did use the um, original aeration mounts. Um, bolt through, nut to um, clamp mat, and then the, the, the standard grey plastic fixing and the, the nylon nut. And then just screw when I put I did put a plastic uh, sorry an alloy washer underneath. Gotta be careful with those not to over tighten them. God that looks awesome. Remember there's no oil in it, but um, you get the idea. And travel wise, there's well, there's ridiculously too much to be honest. Um but um yeah that is awesome. That's looking the biz now. Right now, let's figure out the fronts. We know we can do the oops, sorry. We know we can do the bottoms the same. Um, we just need to clear the top. Right, let's get on with that. Right, that's the fronts on, and it was just exactly the same process. Did use a little um, blue spacer stroke washer on the bottom. Um, damn, look at that thing. That wow. <laughs> Now it's all together. It's um, it's really come alive. I um, as I say, I've copied this from um, my buddy Robert because he did this. And uh, as soon as I saw it, I was like, "Yeah, I've got to have one of them." Um, and obviously, I'd got rid of my old top four. Well, I had two top forces, and I might have two top forces again, but we'll talk about that later. But. Um, Wow. Right, what I need to do is um I'll I'll put some wheels on um and just want to get it all lined up and see what the stance looks like. Boom. Oh my word. Well as top forces go, that is absolutely gorgeous. I am blown away by that. It is absolutely stunning. I've just put the egress wheels and tyre set on it, um, which probably won't go with the body shell I have in mind for it. But 
these wheels and tyre set as we know they make any car look fantastic especially when it's just like chassis only but um, yeah wow so a couple of interesting points obviously I've got this sat really low oh my god look at that um, because initially before we run it, it that's just going to sit on the shelf until the snow goes um, so what I'll just do is I'll show you I'll just give it its maximum clearance because there's something a little bit interesting that I want to point out right so if I just sit that down gently right so as you can see plenty on the back end but that's the maximum on the front there's still quite a lot but if I match the back up now so the chassis is kind of flat I know it wants to rake forward very slightly but um, yeah so my point being I don't know if there's enough clearance for sort of proper off-road with that shock tower now that's the Evo shock tower now I have got the shorter Evo tower I think if you're going to run that you know and be doing jumps and things you'd want to put the shorter tower on it's not much shorter you're probably looking at about 8 mil but that'll give you the extra front um, gr uh, ground clearance that it needs but for me right now that's pretty much cock on and from underneath yeah as I say I'm leaving that alley cover on um, for now but um, I probably wouldn't dare run it with that on just because dirt will get in there what a build this was it, it, it probably is the best car um, I've done on the channel and to be honest you're probably not going to see another one like this because as you guys know these are these are cash cows these are money pits <laughs> um, there's so much money tied up obviously you've got the cost of the basic kit the big bore aeration shocks they're like oh, oh I don't even want to think what I paid for them probably close to 200 quid the carbon that was a hundred quid the um, alloy braces that was close to a, a hundred euros I think um, and then the aftermarket prop shaft cups they're not so dear genuine Tamiya turnbuckles the, the Tamiya um, ball ends and nuts you know they're not cheap they're not cheap at all um, I think one day I might add it all up but um, yeah right now I am mega happy with that well guys what do you think it's not a bad looking thing is it <laughs> um, wow yeah um, obviously I knew how it was going to look um, from Roberts just before I end this video I want to give a couple of thank yous um, I want to give Greg in the US a shout out he actually sold me the top force kit and I was really struggling to find one um, Michael for doing the deal on the big bar shocks um, yeah the big bar shocks were the sticking point with this um, Nick Walker for the carbon chassis set superb work again and of course Bora for the um, alloy braces um, just absolutely quality um, yeah just I'm, I'm made up with this I, I know I always say this when I build something but this this is a little bit special it really is um, yeah so in in the next video which I'll I'll launch the day after this one um, so you can see it finished we're actually um, putting a, a brand new aftermarket top force shell and wing set on it that's been made um, by Owen um, now when you actually watch that video the shell and wing set will have all already been launched in a in a, a, a video um, but yeah that sounds daft yeah you'll have if you follow the channel you'll have seen the launch of the shell but in the next video we'll be actually making the shell and putting it all together and figuring out what details we've got to um, I won't give any I won't give any spoilers away what what's different about it but it is if you know the top force then it's pretty it's very different but if you don't know the top force so probably at first glance you'll think it's a standard top force anyway I'll shut up about that you can figure that out in the next video 
But um, yeah, absolutely made up. It took about two days um, to put that together. Obviously, we've got to sort that steering out. Um, I haven't really looked at it, I've got to be honest. Um, I need to look at my other Evo um, replica that I did because I've definitely had more steering than that. And I'm wondering whether on this arm to um, flip it because then it'll be facing outwards instead of inwards. And I think if I can then put the turnbuckle on, that'll definitely give me more steering, I think. We may eventually end up scrapping that, I don't know. But um, right now, it, it is what it is, it's all good. So, I think I've covered everything. So guys, thanks so much for watching, it's massively appreciated. If you are new to this channel, if you could please consider liking and subscribing to support us. And if you do that, smash that notification bell for our weekly videos. And as always guys, happy RCing.